I, you know, so I think USC checked pretty much all the boxes. Uh, you know, if I think if there was one thing that USC didn't get, it was like a really dynamic performance from Corey Foreman. Uh, you know, let's let's be honest that he's still behind schedule in terms of his overall development. But again, that's because of Clay Helton and Todd Orlando last year. It's not because of anything Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch are failing to do. It's like this is a guy where, you know, he will need to come along in August camp. They'll need to bring him along into September. And of course, you know, the, 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 the first game of the seasons against rice. So like that's, that's a game in which, you know, he'll, they'll just try to get him acclimated. And the real hope is he'll be ready to rock and roll and be a quality frontline producer. When we get into Fresno state in week three, and especially that trip to Corvallis and Oregon state in week four. So if there was one note that like USC didn't quite hit out of the park, it was Foreman. But everything else, when you think about it, checked so many boxes. Let's start with Caleb Williams. You know, he's the star. He's the rock star. Needed to see him make some great plays. He did. You know, you might have seen that back foot throw put right in the bucket to Terrell Bynum down the right sideline. Like that's what the fans came to see. That's what recruits and transfer portal additions watching on ESPN needed to see like, Hey, there's that dude at quarterback. I want to be on that team. So Caleb Williams made the kinds of plays that are going to attract other recruits and other portal entrants uh, to USC. And the reminder about the portal is that if you want to play this fall, you have to declare and enter the portal by May 1st. So <clears throat> it was important for Caleb Williams to put on the show, not just for himself, not just for his teammates, but for the people watching and thinking about whether they should go to USC from another school. So he he, he accomplished that particular task. And in, in terms of uh, assessing how successful this spring game was, we saw instant results over the weekend. We saw Bryson Shaw, a uh, safety from Ohio State, transfer to USC, and he was the third leading tackler on the Buckeyes last season. So that is a nice value add for USC as an immediate consequence of the spring game. You saw a, 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 a four-star pass rusher with great speed uh, narrowed his list down to USC and Michigan right after the spring game. And you saw other uh, recruits set their June official visit dates right after the spring game. So within the first 36 hours after the spring game ended, on Saturday afternoon, you saw instant movement on multiple fronts, portal, official visits, a guy reducing his list down to two. Uh, you're, you're seeing a lot of action, all trending in a positive direction for USC. Uh, just other notes that we can mention on Caleb Williams first drive, which was a touchdown drive. And of course, it ended with a touchdown pass to his uh, former Oklahoma teammate, now USC teammate, Mario Williams, in which they display great natural chemistry. They just kind of established uh, eye contact and were able to make the sight read, the sight adjustment. Uh, what was also notable about that first drive, five different receivers caught Caleb Williams' five completed passes on that drive. So he got everyone involved. You know, the, So the receiver group showed itself to be very deep. Uh, that, that there are a lot of capable performers. So really at the skill positions, like there, all the answers were great. Uh, all the question marks continue to be the depth of the offensive line. You know, the first team was good. The second team is very inexperienced. And that's why you saw the offense slow down later in the spring game. And then, of course, on the defensive line where, uh, you know, you saw the leaders, Tuli, Tuli Pelotu, uh make some plays. You also saw Romello Height. Uh, you know, record a sack and he was flying around the field. But, you know, having depth uh, at, at that position, that's that's where USC needs to load up in the portal. And uh, the slow start of the defense in this game before it rallied a bit in the second half, um, you know, those are the points of concern. But like we already knew that those were concerns going in in terms of like all the all the uh, aspects of USC's offense. Like th this offense really looks like the real deal. You also saw great plays from Travis Dye, great burst up the middle, hitting the hole quickly. Austin Jones bouncing off the first tackler, you know, tough runner as, as the RB2 right behind Travis Dye. I mean, the skill position players just all aced their exam. Uh, and so it reinforces the idea that this is a team 
that's going to be built to win 42, 35 games. And, uh, you know, so, you know, on offense, I think all the questions were answered positively. It's on defense and especially in, on the defensive front where there's lingering concerns. But uh, in terms of like what a USC fan was hoping for, really, there wasn't uh, much that went wrong. You know, there weren't any turnovers. Uh, Kalen Bullock made an interception and actually looked very good doing it, but it was wiped out by a holding penalty. Uh, so no, no turnovers. And, and that holding penalty, which wiped out the interception, that was one of a very few uh, penalties. There was a targeting call from the Pac-12 officiating crew, and it turned out to be a bad call. You know, it was a shoulder hit. It was a clean hit. So even one of the penalties that was called, it really wasn't a penalty. So it was a clean game but also a physical game. You know, recent uh, USC spring games have been pillow fights under Clay Helton. Lincoln Riley promised that the pod, that the pads would be popping uh, in this particular spring game. And that, that came true. Like this is a team that really did play in the spring game with the same physicality it practiced over the previous uh, several weeks. So, you know, with, with pads popping, uh, that was one thing that USC fans really wanted to see. So over a broad range of questions and considerations, you saw USC checking the box, giving the fans and the coaching staff uh, the kinds of answers they were looking for.